Hello everyone, my name is Victor and I'm currently studying in year 3, majoring in finance. An additional major is information system. I believe most of you are very interested in finance major, but you may not understand the um, course content or some required course, so I will briefly introduce the uh, details of it. So first of all, one thing is very special about finance major is that um, you're, besides studying finance courses, you also need to uh, carry some accounting um, knowledge and also some programming knowledge, which is required by the uh, faculty. So, um, so you have to attend the accounting courses and also the I I some 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 like some kind of um, programming courses. And besides that, um, among all the finance courses, there are a few I think is really unique and very special that I would like to introduce to you. So first is 3001 Key Skills for Finance Professionals, which is um, I won't say it is a course. I would say it is a kind of program. Um, the program will require or motivate you to um, really gain some points through joining some internships program or um, doing some uh, key uh, stakeholders amongst the uh, um, competitions or is joining some activities launched by the faculties. So you can directly build your uh, connections with different kind of alumni, um, your schoolmates and also uh, to learn more practical skill sets from joining the internships programs. So I think it's very unique and very useful. And for the other one is 3810 Bloomberg Market Concept Certifications. Um, I understand most of you may and may heard about Bloomberg, but you may not be able to, or you may not have the experience to use it. So um, among these courses, you will learn how to basically um, watch the layout to understand the uh, where's the news come from and what kind of uh, the key things, the key indicator you have to uh, look at it when you're using Bloomberg in a um, workspace. So I think it's also very useful. And after you complete all the required courses, you move to the electives part. Actually, these three courses are just an example. The, among all the courses, they are very broad and um, um, uh, and carries different kind of areas like uh, starting from the wealth management and also M&A trading or maybe even the general banking side. So, um, so it's almost covered all the, uh, I think it's the finance industries or the areas that you would like to uh, enjoy and interested in. So apart from the course perspectives, um, I think most of you may also I would like to know, is there any way to join a finance major um, if you're not decided to join finance before? So um, I'd like to introduce the so-called MSE, Major Selection Exercise, to you. Um, through this kind of exercise, um, even you have, haven't joined the uh, program-based finance major at first, you can also join it as BBA first. And through this, major selection exercise and joint finance major. And I'm the one uh, who joined BBA first. So I'm a bit, um, more, no more details uh, than others. So please feel free to reach to me with, if you have any kind of further questions. But um, if you want to join this program or get into the finance major, you have to fulfill some kind of requirements like um, the CTA or some uh, grading in um, the foundation's causes. Um, don't look at C plus, this is lying. This is lying actually is much higher, like B plus or A, but I think all of you can manage it. It's very easy, yeah. So um, after covering the how to get into finance without finance major at first, so we can move to what else can the faculty provide to you except just learning, right? So um, I will introduce three kinds of activities that I joined in the uh, university before. <clears throat> to start from the first one, it's called Finance Career Mentoring Program. Um, our faculty always would like to uh, build up the connections between the alumni and also the students. So it's a very great um, opportunity for you to reach out to different kind of um, alumni, which uh, they already have some achievements in their uh, banking industry or finance industries. And also regarding the second one, 
I think is the most interested part. So I'll spend more time on it. Um, is the simulation games um, provided by Amplify Me and connection with our school. So um, what is Insight? You may, uh, you may heard about investment banking, the one who earns so many money, right? So much money. But you may not understand deeply what they are doing or what kind of stuff they have to uh, take care of. So it's a very, uh, I think it's very useful and very uh, unique experience that you can gain. Throughout the simulation games, you can uh, role play the market maker and also the portfolio manager. But it doesn't mean like uh, you give a paper money and get an app hole like what we play in a small, in, in childhood. It's some kind of, you really need to handle the system. You need to uh, really launch or you really need to uh, invest some money inside the system. And once you see the amount is getting decreasing, 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 or even you have to pay back the money and you feel, oh, it's very fun to become a banker, right? So um, another, sec uh, another third one is gaining exposure through competitions. Actually, joining competition is quite common in HKUST. But um, for myself, I've joined uh, the JP Morgan competitions, and it's also very challenging, actually, because you have to uh, build up a portfolio and sell to the client within one week. So they require you to build up the knowledge immediately and launch a portfolio so quickly. But I think it's very unique, a very um, great benefit to your, both of your CV and also your practical skill set. So talking about the internship experience, um, I think one thing you have to understand is that HKUST students, besides activities, besides learnings, um, I think almost all the students would like to join the internship program in order to build up their CV. Um, so for me, I've joined two. One is called Yesho and the other one is HSBC. Um, the first one, what I did is inside the uh, security firm to do some initial public offering part. Um, well, actually it's quite boring because you have to deal with so many kind of documents and keep writing, 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 and do some PowerPoint slides. Um, but um, anyway, also learn a lot. And also it's just two months, so I think it's very rough. And second one is what I'm doing right now. And background is also HSBC. And the HSBC six months placement, what I did is um, I can split it into two parts. One part is credit and lending process management, and the other part is transformation in banking. So it's required you to learn more in the banking system and also uh, carry some knowledge in programming and information system parts. So I think it's, um, I did a great choice when choosing both majors. So I also think it's quite worth to take the gap semester. Actually, I struggled for around two to three weeks because um, you have to understand if you take the gap semester, your graduation date may be different from your peers. So, okay, but I think it's still worth. So I've already talked about the internships, but where to find my internship? I really, really would like to join it. Um, before you join UST, you can just look at it. Uh, friends like third, third party sources. You may reach to JobDB or LinkedIn to search for different kind of jobs, opportunities, but it is fairly separated. So um, you may need to spend a lot of time um, finding something you're not related or not interested in. But after you join UST, in the left one, you can see there's a job board, which I think is UST did a very great job to uh, collect different kind of um, data information and positions and put them all in the job board for you to uh, filter out what you want to do and to uh, understand the requirements. And from the right side is the job opening emails. We were sent by our very helpful Mickey. She uh, send, keep sending us with the um, largest bank or um, different kind of famous companies uh, job offerings opportunities. So you can feel free to um, reach out to different kind of job opening um, opportunities or just to Miki if you joined the um, KUSD and like to join the internships program. So I think it's almost covered most of my part. So I'll pass to Matt to talk about the exchange and also the quantitative finance part. Hello, uh, Victor, are you gonna help switch the slides? Okay, sure. Then I start oh. with your first. Right. Oh, okay. I was like, maybe you can help me. Oh, it's okay. 
production history. Right. Press it. Hmm. How do I present? Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> How? Wake up. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm a bit tired. Um, okay. Hi everyone, this is Matt. Um, I'm a year three turning year four student at UST majoring in quantitative finance. And I'm sure just now you have heard a lot from Victor about his um, experience in the school as well in the FINA program. So I guess I can also, I'm also very happy to offer my perspective. Um, and then I guess the first point I can touch upon is that um, how does the Cuban program uh, differ from the FINA program? Because some of you may be wondering, oh, both programs have finance in the name. So are there any differences? So the answer is yes. Um, the Cuban program is uh, mainly different because of the quantitative uh, component, apparently, or else. Uh, yeah, so that's, so that's why there is a quantitative um, in the program name. Um, but uh, dive into more about it. What it means exactly is that um, the quantitative finance program will consist of more, say, um, statistics, mathematics, and computer courses. Um, but on the other hand, our program will offer less exposure to management, marketing, and accounting courses. So there's some um, different focuses um, that the both programs have. And I can also share a little bit from the curriculum perspective. Um, the Cuban program, um, just like what Victor mentioned before, there are required courses that are also electives in university, uh, in a university degree. And then you see for my required courses, you can see down the list, there are stuff like derivative securities, which mean uh, uh, in Chinese, there are also some other courses like uh, quantitative trading, econometrics. Yeah, I don't know the Chinese, but yeah, <laughs> but basically these are some of the more quantitative components that you can um, you can learn. Um, and then as for electives, uh, I want to highlight the area B and area C, because basically what area B, A, B, C means that is that under the area, there are also a list of courses that you can choose from. But you can see from B and C, uh, we are we can take courses from uh, take uh, from uh, you know with relations to programming and quantitative skills. So I guess that can um, kind of explain why um, our program has such a quantitative emphasis. All right. And then uh, I guess after talking about the academic part, um, you guys must also be very interested in how it's like to be um, in the Cuban community because after all in university, you're not just focusing fully on your studies. You also you know, have to expand your social setting, your social network um, and try to enjoy your university life before you work full time. So um, I can share more about the Cuban community um, is that the first point is there is a really nice, um, supportive uh, network where people and the students, no matter if they're in the same year as you or they're in other batches, um, they're also very nice to you. And for example, last year when I was trying to apply, I'm sorry, when I was trying to apply for jobs, because um, the finance job industry is very competitive. Um, so I kind of had a lot of pressure navigating through that. But because the other um, quantitative finance students, they kind of pick the same um, pathways as me that they also want to enter the finance industry. That's why we have a lot of um, common topics um, that we can share our pressure, our depression or our excitement. Uh, so it's very nice um, that I have some of my best friends in the QFIN program as well. The second point is about the Korea support network. Um, for example, yes, just like what Victor mentioned, there are some job ads that are sent through um, the program level because our program also has some great connections with some of the industry partners. And another perspective is the alumni network that we have um, that we can also rely on 
Uh, and most of the alumni, even though they're very busy in their schedules, they're willing to take some of their time off their work to um, maybe have a coffee chat and have a phone call with me um, back then and then to share with me their experiences. So they're really helpful. Um, the third point is about the branding, which um, I, I guess is just uh, self-explanatory that um, the Cuban program is, I think, I hope it's highly regarded in the industry. Um, so it's really designed for students with a strong passion for finance. So after talking about you know, the studies part, um, the sort of community part, I also wanna to touch upon another aspect that is very important, not just to finance students, but also in general, every business student, right? It's about how you can acquire internship experience that can set you prepared for your future um, long-term career. So I am also very happy to share my experiences throughout the past few years. Um, so, right, let's start from the first one. Um, the first one, I the first uh, finance company that I worked at is called Privé Technologies and it's a fintech company. And interestingly, um, the first ever internship I had in the finance industry is um, related to my Cuban program um, because of the job ad. So there's a job ad by the Cuban telling us that uh, this firm needs more interns. So I applied and then luckily um, got the offer. So that's how I started my uh, first ever exposure to the broader finance industry. So that's pretty nice. Um, and then the second um, uh, internship that I had also in the finance industry is called Moonfair. Um, and I guess this experience is unique to me because at that time I was having my studies as well, um, taking like five courses, actually six courses, but then at the same time had to work there like three full day through three full days a week. So it's very pressurizing for me. Um, and it's also a big step out for me to try to um, learn how to maximize my time, the limited time, uh, learn how to balance different side of things. So I'm pretty grateful for this experience as well. Um, and the third internship is at City. So um, in the private banking division specifically, so if you guys don't know what private banking is, essentially you can consider this as a division that is specifically um, you know, catering for very rich people that they have a lot of complex needs ranging from their credit needs, um, their loans needs, so they may have you know, I sometimes apply for a large amount of loans and also they have investment needs, um, a lot of different aspects. So that's why private banking is here to help out them. Um, I'm very fortunate to join this through the Private Wealth Management Apprenticeship Program, which is a university-wide program. And then uh, joined this bank to have my first ever exposure to the banking industry as well. So I think um, the procuring program in the sense that it really helped me uh, equip with the knowledge, just like I mentioned uh, from the curriculum perspectives, there are a lot of courses that are very, very relevant to the finance industry. So I think that set me uh, equipped uh, with the sort of knowledge uh, that can help me, you know, when I'm in the interviews or even on the job, um, at least I had some knowledge um, before really learning the real industry stuff. Okay, so um, I guess talking about all these um, career related things, um, I also want to emphasize that um, university, um, there is an exchange program, which is really great. Um, I did that uh, last semester. Uh, I went to Italy um, in the midst of COVID. Um, <laughs> I think in Europe, the COVID situation actually um, I don't know, compared to Hong Kong at that time was not that serious. It's actually getting better than in Europe in terms of the number of cases. So I guess I was pretty fortunate to join that program. Um, and then, yeah, I want to share more about my experience uh, using the last few minutes um, to give you guys like in, what you can do because you don't have to be a, a Cuban student, you don't have to be a finance student. Essentially, if you're a university student, you're entitled to this opportunity, you can apply for it. Um, you just, you know, apply your personal statement with a and then go through internship, sorry, not internship, go through interview. And then um, pretty much, um, you know, they also look at GPA, but 
um, because there's such a large variety of schools, you wouldn't really have to be worried about whether you will be able to go to exchange. I feel like the university is so good in the sense that if you want to go to exchange, um, you can pretty much do it. Um, so that's really nice. So about my own personal experience in Italy, I went to um, Milan, uh, the Bocconi University. I think it's my first time ever stepping out from Asia because throughout my life I've never been traveling outside of Asia so it's very very exciting for me um, you can see a lot of pictures that I took here um, for example the bottom left picture was actually my apartment that I rented outside because I didn't live in the student hall but you can see it has a, such a great view um, and then there I also tried out the carbonara there which was not that nice because it's very heavy <laughs> compared to the Hong Kong style <laughs> I feel like I'm more accustomed to Hong Kong style more uh, anyway <laughs> so you see I had a lot of fun I also travel around different countries not just in Italy so after all it's really really nice experience um, I guess the last kind of few points I can touch upon is about more about the Bocconi University aspect. Um, so there is something called credit transfer. What it means is essentially uh, you can study in overseas in an overseas institution. You can study the courses offered by that institution, but at the same time, the kind of credit or the kind of workload that you've gone through can be recognized by UST. So in the sense that you don't have to, um, yeah, it's kind of translated in your university uh, transcript. Um, so that's pretty nice because you can, you know, enjoy all the upsides from going to exchange while the courses you take are actually transferable to the university. So that's pretty nice. Um, at that time, I took some finance courses, economic courses, and also a course about fashion companies. Um, I don't know about fashion industry at all, but I thought because USD does not have this program, I'm uh, sorry, have this course. So I thought, okay, let me just take that, um, try, try, try something new. So that's something also very interesting about um, the exchange program. And I think the university also pretty nice. I met quite a lot of people. I talked to a lot of European people, even not just at the school, but also in Italy and when I'm traveling. And I think this is definitely an experience that you guys should enjoy. I hope that when you guys join university after a few years so the COVID situation will get better so that you know it comes back to normal and you guys can just freely go and decide and um, without having much worries but yeah I think this is pretty much what I wanted to share um, if you guys would like to raise more questions just you know let me know or let Victor know let everyone know <laughs> in the breakout rooms or yeah thank you guys thank you